G'day guys, Chris King back again. Thanks for joining me. This is the Soccer Training Sessions course for all you grassroots soccer coaches out there. This is from my ebook or paperback book, Training Sessions for Soccer Coaches, Volume 1. There's Volume 1, 2, and 3 out there. It's available on Amazon or available on my website. And this drill will take you through um, how to press. Okay, so I've got a few books out there as well. If you need some on attacking, on a rondos, or if you're a kid's coach, I've got some on that as well. And I've also got one out on walking football, if you're into that as well. So yeah, this is part of the Udemy course. We're on to session two, and this is drill two of the how to press session. Now let's take you through it. Excuse me, I've got a sore throat as well, so I might be having a, a little sip of my Pepsi there every now and then just to keep my throat um, yeah, going so I can keep talking. Now let's show you the setup here. All right, this is one of my favorite drills, actually. My players love it. It uh, works on a lot of things. Fitness is one thing. Uh, communication is another big one of this drill as well. So um, I think if you implement it in one of your training sessions, you'll see that your players love it and hopefully it can become one of your regular ones. Now, and just remember with these drills, I have a, a number of players, but it's always adjustable. You know, I, like I said before, I realize that you might have different numbers um, at your training sessions than what you had planned. So you know, you can always take players out or make it a 3v2 or a 5v4 if you've got more players, okay? As long as you're still working on that um, same, uh, on the principle that you want to get across to the players, okay? So this is grassroots. It's not professional level, you know, it's at, it's at that, um, obviously a good quality level. Like these are aimed at a youth players from 16 up to adult players that have a, have a good skill level. But I realize that at a lot of, uh, grassroots levels, you know, you have different standards of players and different numbers and everything like that. So always adjust the drill accordingly, okay? If you need to slow it down or if you need to bring in extra players or take players out, just do what you feel is right for your players. So here we go. So we've got a large rectangle set up with two mini goals at either end. And then we've got four attackers with a ball, three defenders. And then we've got some spare players over the back there. Now, the aim of this game is for the four attackers to work their way across, and then they can score once they get across the halfway line in either of the mini goals. And obviously, the aim of the three defenders is to stop them doing this. Now, uh, the defenders can push up as high as they want. All right, so this is pressing. So when you press, you don't want to wait until the last second and when the attackers are already close to the goal. So press hot, as high up as possible. So you want your defenders to get up the, the pitch now uh so that's the setup now the main thing that happens here is when there's been a shot on goal or the ball goes out the highest positioned attacker peels off they become um runs down the outside and goes to the back and then that leaves it as three defenders and a new defender comes on makes it 4v3, and they become the attackers. Now, this will become clear. It might sound a bit confusing just to start with, but once you see it in action, once I explain it to you again, it'll all become clear. So let's let it play. So 4v3, black team are aiming to score in the goals on the right-hand side. Once they do, or once the ball goes out, the white team, a player will come on, and they'll make it four, and a black player will peel off, making it 4v3 going the other way. So they just alternate directions each time. All right, here we go, guys. All right, so we saw what happened there. So the four black players gone up the other end, pass the ball around nice and sharp. Uh, the three white players have done the right thing. They've pressed over this side, but we've managed to get the ball out to the um, spare player on the wing there, and they've finished the ball in the goal. Now, if they're the highest player, all right, so number three in the black is the furthest uh, forward player. So they're going to peel off, make a uh, recovery run, what I call a recovery run, 
uh, to the back of the line there. Now, what will happen here is a white player will come on, then they make it 4v3, go up the other end. Boom. All right. So they're trying to pass their way up. So it's a great through ball to number two. Number two scores. Number two was the highest, furthest player. So they peel off. And a new black player comes on. And, oh, they made a bad pass. Now, what happens here? If the team, if the attacking team of four lose possession, the defensive team have 10 seconds to try and score in one of the mini goals. Okay. Now, why we do this, why we don't just make it open play, they've got us long. We want those, they've pressed high up the field. So we want them, if they win possession, which was the aim of the game, they've pressed really hard, won it back straight away. We want them to shoot on goal as soon as they can before the defensive team can transition and get their team organized. All right. So you want to get catch them on the hop. So I like to say to my players, right, you've got 10 seconds to score. All right, I'll just let this play again. I'll have a sip of my drink and you can watch it. All right, hope that's clear. And even though that was an interception, then White get to keep the next ball because it was their turn. All right, so this is a good one because teams, defenders need to be organized. Black team have got caught out a couple of times there. Okay, they haven't pressed high enough. They haven't been, um, haven't reorganized. As soon as they've lost the ball, they haven't reorganized. So players have got to communicate um, excuse me, to each other, say who's on the player on the ball, push over, like we've done with the small rondos. You want to push over to the side where the ball is, nearest player presses to the ball carrier and the others try and block the passing lanes. Okay, so let's go through a few instructions and rules here that we've been talking about just to solidify it. So we've got... Four attacking players start with possession versus three defensive players. Play starts and restarts with either the coach passing a ball in or the fourth attacker bringing the ball in. So that's the way that I like to play it. They can dribble the ball in, and then if they're not being pressed or anything, they can keep dribbling and then pass the ball. <laughs> Excuse me. The attacking team of four must start behind the halfway point, get past that halfway line, and then they can score in either of the small goals. Now, once the attackers have scored or the ball goes out, the other team brings in their fourth player, the highest, the most furthest forward player from the attacking team makes that recovery run, goes around the back, okay? And they make it a 4v3 going in the opposite direction. And as we saw there, if the defensive three players win the ball, they have 10 seconds to score in either of those mini goals. Right, so that's the setup, 4v3, and you've got your spare players here. You could have, um, doesn't matter if you've got three or four players because it's a pretty high intensity. Players will be pretty puffed after a while. And if you've got extra players... You can always have the two players go off, the two highest players go off, all right, and then, um, and then you've got what have we got there? Yeah, four. You can have two players go off, and an extra defensive player can race on as well. They can be situated at the halfway line, things like that. So you can always, we don't want players standing around on the sidelines for too long. So if you can keep players involved, keep them involved, all right? We don't want lines at training. Like right, you want the players always involved. So I've already seen that. So let's jump to the end here. We'll go through a few key coaching points and a few variations of the game. Yeah, great through ball there by number three. Number five finishes, boom, and makes the recovery run. Fantastic play. Now, 
This is all about pressing. So players aim to win the ball with pressure as high up as possible. So don't sit off. Get those players to push forward as, as quickly as they can. Get organized. Right, Push over into the danger area. If there's a spare player on the other side, don't worry too much. You can always adjust and move over as the ball goes over. Passing lanes. I've started speak, uh, talking about that in the last video or two. So a passing lane is, so let's give you a quick example here. All right. So when five comes on, number one has come into this area and blocked the passing lane. So a passing lane would be five passing to one, five to three, can't reach number two. So you want the nearest player going and pressing, and then the other players blocking the passing lanes. So they're not just randomly um, standing in space. They want to be smart. They want to look over their shoulders and see where the ball could possibly be. Then that makes it harder for the um, players to pass out, puts pressure on them. Okay, so that's what a passing lane is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, the closest player pressures the ball carrier to force them back or to win the ball, and the other players attempt to block passing lanes, okay, and make the small area of the ground defensive. So, um, press up, like I said, don't worry about the other side of the ground. If the ball moves over there, your players adjust. Now, if the defensive team wins the ball, they can score, but must do so within 10 seconds, as I mentioned. So, if you do win that ball up high, you want to score as quickly as you can before the um, other team can get, and before the um, other team can get organised in their defensive shape. All right, so let's leave it at that, guys. Thank you. Uh, so let's leave it at that, guys. As I said, this is a great one. It works on fitness. It works on communication. Players have got to communicate all the time. Who's coming off? Who's going off? Who's coming on? Um, who's pressing? Okay, so uh, it's really good for the attacking and the defensive team. So hopefully you enjoyed that one. That's from Training Sessions um, for Soccer Coaches Volume 1, which comes free with my udemy.com, U-D-E-M-Y.com course, which hopefully a few of you are watching this on. And otherwise, this book, Volumes 1, 2, and 3 are out, so you can pick it up from Amazon or from my website. And I've also got a lot of other... Uh, coaching books as well, coaching books for kids and also two volumes on soccer rondos and two volumes on attacking drills as well. So yeah, thanks for your support. Hopefully you're enjoying this and your coaching confidence is growing already. You can see that how to run it, run a training session, how one drill can lead on to the other. So you can really focus on a particular um a particular topic for that night. So pressing, attacking, midfield play, whatever you want to work on, whatever you think your team's lacking or you think they need to improve on, you can really work on that for the whole session. So you're not jumping from a shooting drill to defending to midfield. You know, you can really focus the players on that one topic of the night, which in this case is pressing. So you'll have a, a rondo on pressing and then a smaller drill and then um, a larger game set up that works on pressing. And then you can just play a regular game, an open game at the end as well. All right, guys, let's leave it there. Thank you for watching. And I will see you on the...